Hi guys, I'm Teddy Schatz. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to make a crochet Christmas sweater. We're going to use three basic stitches, the uh, chain stitch, the half double crochet, and the double crochet. And I'm going to show you at, at least a few rows of each one of those stitches. Um, so let's get started. All right, so let me show you what the back is going to look like when we finish it. See, this right down here is the half double crochet row. We're going to crochet in the back loop only, which is what gives it this look like it's a knit one, purl two, knit one, purl two. Here, these are all double crochets, and you can see we decrease slightly for the armholes. And then for the neckline on the back, I'm leaving that one flat. So we'll connect the shoulders here and here, but the neckline will be right here along the back, and I'm going to make a collar separately for it. Okay, let's fold that, set it aside. The well, very first thing that you need to make is a slip knot. So, with your yarn, you're going to take some in your fingers and twist it. And now you got a loop. Now you're going to take the one that's on the top, and shove it up from underneath through that loop, stick your hook through it, and then pull both of the straight ends down. Now that loop's way too big, right? So you just tighten it like a ponytail where you pull both ends away from each other. And now you got your loop. And we're going to chain on seven. So a chain is taking the yarn over the hook and pulling it through the loop that's on the hook. That's one. Yarn over, pull through. That's two. Yarn over, pull through. Three. Yarn over, pull through, four, five, six, I gotta get closer to the end there, seven. Okay, now it's our next stitch, the half double crochet stitch. So for that one, we have our loop that's on the hook. We're gonna yarn over again like we have been, and we're going to go in the second loop from the hook. So what does that mean? Well, this won't be the first loop from the hook, it's not the one on it, it's one away. And this one's the second loop. And we wanna go in the top of it, yarn over again and pull it through. Now we have three loops on our hook. We're gonna yarn over one more time and pull through all three. Now sometimes it's not that easy to get through all three and you have to do one at a time. So let's take it again. We got yarn over, Let's go into our loop here. Oh, <laughs> bad habit of mine to yarn under instead of over. It works the same though. I usually yarn under actually, but you can pull it through one or two at a time. Just make sure that you don't yarn over again in between those three loops. So we'll yarn over again, go into our next loop, yarn over, pull it through and then pull it through all three of the loops that are on the hook. Yarn over. Ooh, it's kind of disoriented looking, disorienting to look through the camera to do this. Pull it through, pull it through all of the loops. Oops. So right there, I got a stray strand. I don't want to end up ripping that strand or pulling it out too far. So you want to catch that as they come. And you can fix most issues pretty easily with crocheting or knitting, as long as you just kind of don't panic and keep trying. And one more. Okay, now it's time to turn our row. So in order to turn our row, ooh, camera started falling. Oof. In order to turn our row, well actually let's make sure we have the right amount of stitches, we should have six. One, two, three, four, five, six, okay. We're going to chain one. Now I think of this chain as completing the first row. Chain again, remember that chain is that yarn over, pull through the loop. So we have two chains here. We're gonna turn our yarn around, okay? We're gonna yarn over and go in just the back loop. So that means, see how we have this so we have this right here and this right here. They're part of the same loop. 
So we want to stick it in just the back. Yarn over, pull through, and complete our half double crochet stitch all the way across. I'm not sure why this keeps going blurry on me. I must be moving too much. Um, I'll try to figure out how to fix that, but for now, it's not really stopping us from seeing what we're doing, so it's fine. And remember, you can always pause and rewind the video to watch the parts that are difficult over and over again. That's one of the best parts. Like I said, it's really disorienting doing this looking through the camera lens. So this one's kind of hard to find. See how you have this right here? Well, you can tell those are both flat next to each other, right? So you turn it here and you can see that they make kind of that loopy, almost a V pattern. So this is your back loop, okay? It can get a little twisted on the ends, but hopefully you can tell from the video what it looks like. And let's do another row together. So I'm gonna pull through. I'm going to chain twice, chain one, when it's yarning over it and pulling it through. And yes, I yarn under a lot. It's faster for me, honestly. And I don't think, I don't see any difference. So here we go. Yarn over. And we're going to go through the back loop again. Every time it's the back loop, we got back loop right here. Could you guys see that back loop okay? Let me do uh a little bit better on the next one. There we go. So we're going to yarn over. Oops. Yarn over. And see we've got our... This is a loop. So that's the back of it. I'm going in the back here. Yarn over. And pull through. Yarn over again. Pull through. Oops, what did I do there? Okay, well, let's take that one out. I don't know what I did. We'll put that back on our hook here so we backtracked a whole step. Yarn over. Back loop. Yarn over. Pull through. Yarn over again and pull through all three. I see what I'm doing here. There we go. Two more on this row. And then I'm going to pause it and do several rows so that I can show you how we turn it and begin the second, the double crochets. Again, this last one, it looks twisted, doesn't it? So you can tell this is the side because it matches all these side ones. And this is the top. So this is our back loop right here. We're going to go into our back loop. Yarn over and pull through. Yarn over and pull through again. Okay, so that's what it looks like so far. You can see we've got our little pattern starting here of our two pearls, one knit, or if you flip it over, we have our pearl knit, two pearls, and then this would be a knit row, the next one. So I'm gonna do a few more rows, and then I'm going to come back and show you how to do the double crochet, the turn and the double crochet. And this is for a size five, six. All right, so this should be enough to show you guys how to turn and do the double crochet. First thing we're going to do is chain two. Actually, chain, chain three, excuse me. So we chained three. Now we're gonna wrap the yarn over like we have been. Now the locations that we're looking for when we're adding this in are right here. We've got a prime spot. Right here we have this big gap and this little one right here. And that's going to be the same every time you come to one of these. See, we've got that big loop right here that matches this one. The open one right here that match. And then on the other side of this little uh, up and down, we have our little one. Those are the three we're going to look for. So the way that this works is like every two rows is three stitches. 
but then I think you add one on each end. I can't remember for sure. So we're going to, we have our yarn over here. We're going to go through just the top of the loop here. See just the top yarn over again and pull through. Now here's where it's different from the half double. We're going to only pull through two of the stitches this time. Okay. And then yarn over again and pull through the two remaining loops. It's not too much different, so it shouldn't be, you know, much more difficult. But remember, you can always pause, rewind. So let's yarn over again, go through our big gap here, yarn over, pull through, and now we only want to go through two loops, right? And then yarn over and another two loops. Good job. Yarn over. This is our little one. Remember, we have our, our vertical. Then we have this little horizontal one here. Now that one's going to be hard to get onto, but remember, you only have to do this for one row. After that, it gets much easier. And I can't see it through the camera. There we go. I had to look underneath the camera. Okay, here we go. Hm, I say camera. It's my phone. I don't have fancy equipment. I might someday though. So we're going to go all the way across this row. Now for my size 5, 6, I had 38 half double crochet rows. And I have, and I have um, eighteen double crochet rows until the armpit decrease. Oops, got tangled. Now let's take that off all the way. We don't want to fray our yarn here. So pull through two and through two again. Go through a big loop, a big gap right there. Pull through two and two again. Crochet over. Oh, and I have 58 in my first double crochet row. My double crochet rows across for the size 5, 6, I've got 58 stitches. This is just a sample, so it's not going to be 58 stitches. But it'll give you an idea. In the pattern below, I'm going to write the modifications that should work out to one size above or one size below. Um, and I, actually, I can probably write them out for several sizes um, because... Five, six, and kids is kind of a small size. It, I mean, it's literally a kid small, so there you go, right? Back to our big gap. The little one we sneak in there. See how I use my other finger to help me get it onto that hook? That's fine to do. Um, you don't have to have perfect form. In fact, I think perfect form is like this or something because it's more ergonomic. But it actually kind of pinches here at the bottom of my palm. It doesn't really feel comfortable. Um, we'll yarn over again. Go into our loopy one. Pull through two. Yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over again and go through our gap. Now, let's see. This one's hard to tell, but that's our vertical one. So here, what you may want to do is actually go into this one here, this vertical one. Of course, that depends. I think it'll look fine if we skip that one and go straight to the loop. And that depends on which side is facing when you end your row. Oops, I'm off screen. Sorry. Ah. What did I do? Okay, here we go. Let's pull that so it doesn't look so messy. So I don't think we need two here. I don't think we need one here and one here. I think it'll look tight enough if we do it here. 
So we've got our last one before we turn. And you do it the same way as all the other ones. Now I'm using the chain at the end as a stitch. So you're going to chain up three and that counts as your first stitch. One, two, three. Okay. Now we turn it around. So it was going this way. Now it's going to go this way. And we're going to yarn over, skip this first one here, and go into this one. Now when you go into this stitch, instead of going through the top here and going through just the back, you want to go through here, like you're underneath this little loop, and stick it through, okay? And now you pull through, yarn over, pull through two of them, yarn over or under, whichever you want, I don't care. Pull through two of them, yarn over, and once again, you're going through this, you can see we have like two parallel ones right here. And we have a little hole here. We're gonna stick it in there, and you can see our loop on the top here. So like we're underneath both. Pull through two, pull through two again. And one more time, I'm gonna show you real up close how to do that. We've got our two parallels here, our loop on the top. We're gonna go underneath both of these sides. Yarn over and pull through. Yarn over and pull through. There we go. Let's finish up this row. And we'll do one more row together, okay? So don't worry, you're not alone yet. It's recording this upside down. I wonder if I can flip that. I hope I can. I don't think I have time to re-record. Now, since we are using the chain up as a stitch, we went in this last loop, this normal looking loop, and now we're also going to go in the chain. Now, you have choices here. You can go through like this, or you can go through like this. In this specific pattern with this yarn, I don't see a difference. Um, sometimes it'll make this one look kind of like it bubbles out a little bit if you go through like this. So you want to go into the stitch itself, but with this one, it doesn't seem to make a difference. So I'm not going to concern myself with that. Now we will chain up three. One, two, three. So now let's talk about the decrease that we're going to have for our armholes or, um, yeah, we'll go ahead and talk about that. So I chained up three. I'm gonna yarn over, skip the first stitch, skip the second stitch, and go into the third one. Because technically, this first one right here is already continued on with our chain. Now, for the five, six, I decreased by two in row 18. And of course, this will be written in the pattern below. And you just do a normal double crochet, you just skip a stitch. So to decrease by another one, you would go across, skip one, go into the next one, yarn over. And I would think that um, if you want one size smaller, decreasing by two would also be okay. But if you were making this for a toddler, you might want to decrease by just one because they are much smaller. Now let's see how our decrease is going to look on the other side. I also would like to talk about how these are totally customizable. Um, for instance, if you are making this for somebody who 
has an arm that they can't move. Uh, like my husband's grandmother had severe lymphedema in her left arm and she couldn't get sweater sleeves over it. Make it without that sleeve. Make that sleeve separately and I'm going to show you some modifications that we can make for the sleeves to make them fit anyone comfortably. I mean, if you're making this for somebody who's had their arm amputated, you, you want it to be comfortable and to fit nice, right? So we're going to make it so that if they're like broader shouldered, maybe don't decrease the arm so much. Um, or we're going to make an oval shaped patch that's going to go over the armhole so that it looks like it's meant to be that way. Because how much does it suck when it's not meant to be that way and you just like sew the sleeve shut? That's not, I mean, everyone deserves to have clothes that are made for them. And a lot of times I think that gets really overlooked. Oh, sorry, I forgot. So once again, we're at the other end now. We want to decrease for the armholes from both ends. So we're going to skip a stitch and go into the next one. And once again, we're going to skip a stitch and go into the next one because we're decreasing by two. So we skipped two stitches total from each side. And you can count to confirm. Um, so we had 13. We should have nine here. And we do. We have nine. Woo, we did it right. Good job. Yay us. So um, feel free to work on the back of the sweater and the front of the sweater up until where the neckline starts. And we will go over the neckline in the next episode. Thank you guys, you've been a great audience. Um, thank you guys, you've been a great audience. Have a great day and we'll see you next time. Bye.